Can we capitalize demolition costs under IFRS when the land was purchased with the building on it? Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sylvia of cpdbox.com. Welcome to this video with my answer to one of your questions. And if you have your own question that you want me to respond and send it to me via our website. And if it's useful for many people, I will answer it in a video like this one. Today's question is from Zarina from Malaysia. Well, she asked me in the comments below one of my articles on my website. And I think that she raised an issue that is faced by many developers, constructors, real estate officers or companies who build real estate for their own use or rentals or resell, whatever. Hi, I'm Auditor and we need your advice on the following situation for my client's account. They have freehold land and building with total cost of 20 million currency units acquired in 2015. The building was partly demolished in 2017, just before the year end. And right after the financial year end, the building was completely demolished and client intends to sell the land. The company never split the total cost of 20 million between the land element and building element. And the depreciation of building has never been charged. What should a company do in this situation? Hmm, I came across the same question many times during my work and it seems many companies face more or less the same issue, just slightly twisted. So let's start with properties for own use under IS-16, property plan and equipment, and let's start with the demolition cost because that's easier. And I tell you one thing. IS-16 deals with what you can capitalize, what you cannot capitalize and other matters related to property, plan and equipment, but it does not directly address the demolition or removal of obstacles. IS-16 says in the paragraph 16 that, well, except for other things, the cost of an item of property, plan and equipment includes any cost directly attributable to bringing the asset to the location and condition necessary for it to be capable of operating in a manner intended by the management. Well, wait a second. What did the last word say? Intended by the management. Okay, so let's ask. What was the intention of the management when they purchased the building together with land? What did they want to achieve? Well, there are a few scenarios possible, but before I will speak more about it, please remember, always look to the original intention or the reason why the building and land were acquired, because this will give you further direction. So, scenario number one, the company acquired the land with building to demolish the building make some improvements on the land and then sell the land. So here the intention was probably to acquire the land and the demolition cost of building can be seen simply as a cost directly attributable to bringing the land to the condition to be operated in the manner intended by the management. Well, logically, you should add these demolition costs to the cost of the land as some land improvement. Scenario number two, the company acquired land with building to demolish the building, develop the site, build a new building and then use it. In this case, it's a bit more complicated because the intention is to have the new building. And IS-16 says in paragraph 58 that the building and the land shall be classified as two separate items. Okay, so you will have the land and the new building. And in this case, demolition costs of old building are incremental to the new building, or in other words, you would not incur the demolition cost without wanting to build a new building. So in this case, you should capitalize the demolition cost to the cost of new building. Scenario number three, the company acquired land with building, then used the old building for some short time and then demolished it with the intention to build a new building. Okay, so the management's intention at acquisition was to use the existing structure or building. And in this case, demolition relates to the disposal of old building. So you would not capitalize it to the cost of the new building, but you would expense it as incurred. Well, unless you accounted for a provision for removal cost under IS-37, but that's another story. Well, you should also be careful about the fact 
that the demolition should occur within some reasonable time after the acquisition in order to prove the intention, right? So for example, you acquired the land and building in 2016 and you did nothing. And then in 2018, you decided to demolish the building and sell the land. Well, in this case, it's really questionable whether it was your intention to do so and whether you can simply say it's the land improvement because it was the intention of the management. So why such a long time passed between the acquisition and demolition? So, okay, that's it for the demolition cost itself. But what should you do with the carrying amount of the old structures or buildings? Can you capitalize them to the cost of the new buildings or expense? No clear IFRS guidance on this point, but there are some accepted practices and other available guidance. So if you previously used the old building yourself and you decided to demolish it and build a new one, then you should simply derecognize the old building with some gain or loss reported in profit or loss. So more specifically, there is usually some period between the decision to demolish and actual demolition. So you should probably accelerate depreciation over shorter remaining useful life and test the building for some impairment if there's some under IS 36. If you acquire the land with old building to demolish it and build a new asset, then it would be appropriate to allocate a full purchase price to the land without splitting it. In most cases, this would be acceptable because you would rarely purchase highly valuable building with the intention to demolish it. So rationally, the value of the old structure is low anyway. But it's not so simple. It may happen that you acquire the land with building with intention to demolish it, but that building has some fair value. It's usable, but you say, okay, we want this location and we want to remove that structure anyway. In this case, someone might say that there are strong arguments for not including the carrying amount of old building to the cost of the land, because IS-16 requires splitting the land and building element in also the building has its fair value regardless the buyer wants to demolish it or not. So in this case, you might need to allocate some part of the purchase price to the building and write it off in profit or loss because you want to demolish it. But again, you have to determine the fair value of old building really carefully with regard to area, alternative use, and so on. So just look to IFRS 13 fair value measurement for some guidance. Until now, I spoke about the case when you acquire a building for your own use or for rentals. Well, that would be more or less the same under IS 40. But what about the developers and constructors who buy the lands with buildings and demolish them within ordinary course of their business? Oops, that should tell you something. We're dealing with inventories under IS2. So yes, the cost of old building and demolition costs are treated as inventories. And that means that you need to keep inventories at lower off cost and net realizable value. Okay, short disclaimer, this information is not a substitute from a professional judgment of CPA of your own situation and circumstances, and you should consult CPA or other qualified professional. So that's it for this video. For more content like this, please visit cpdbox.com, share this video with your friends or colleagues, subscribe to our free newsletter and to this channel and get more insights like this one. Bye and thanks for watching.